Injured forward Paolo Dybala made the cut as Argentina coach Lionel Scolani named on Friday, November 11th, his 26-man squad for the November 20th to December 18th World Cup in Qatar, where Lionel Messi will lead the side. Dybala has not played for his club, AS Roma, since early October, but has been named in the squad as Argentina hope he regains his fitness before their World Cup campaign begins on November 22nd against Group C opponents, Saudi Arabia. Messi, 35, will be playing in his fifth World Cup and will be accompanied by fellow veterans Angel Di Maria and uh, Nicolas Otamendi, along with fresh faces who helped Argentina win the Copa America title last year. Manchester City forward Julian Alvarez, 22, was named in the squad after a stellar year where he scored 18 goals while on loan at Argentine club River Plate before netting seven times in all competitions for Premier League, City, uh, Premier League club Manchester City. Inter Milan forward Lautaro Martinez, who scored 25 goals last season and has begun th this campaign with eight in all competitions, is expected to lead the line. Argentina also play Mexico and Poland in Group C. It's amazing that Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi will be the fifth and sixth players in history to play in their fifth World Cup. I've had a conversation on this show about whether uh, either of these two players will have significant impacts on their team and may even be responsible for carrying them all the way to the tournament glory. But at their age, I don't think anyone is expecting that much from them. I think their fans will just be happy to see them play in their final World Cup, the opportunity to see two of the best players of their generation and perhaps two of the greatest players that have ever played those sports, ply their football one more time on the biggest stage, whether they will carry their team uh, all the way to the finals and maybe even win the competition is yet to be seen. And if they can do it, I doubt anyone will truly give them the credit for carrying the bulk of the load that star players tend to be saddled with in competitions such as these. We'll see. Now, I do want to talk about something that I think is worth mentioning. So many players have failed to make the cut this World Cup. And unfortunately for them, it has been down mostly to injury. The great players like Reese James, Fikai, um, Reese James, for example, what, isn't going to be playing for England. And for a moment there, it looked like Alexander Arnold also would miss out but he managed to keep his place. But some players did get to stay in, the, in their national sides, even though they perhaps haven't had the best season, uh, they don't have great form on their side, and the manager is relying perhaps on their sheer experience, the star power that they bring, and hoping that on the biggest stage they will be able to live up to the manager's hopes and maybe even, shall we say, dreams. I've spoken about Pulisic featuring for the USA, but I want to talk about Maguire, who has been called up, even though he hasn't featured on a regular basis for Manchester United. He has been having a poor run of form since last season, and even fans have turned against him. And it begs the question why Gareth Southgate would pick a player who hasn't played as much football as is necessary, typically to get into a national side preparing for a major tournament like the World Cup. But also, why he would leave out players like Fikayo Tomori, Joe Gomez of Liverpool, uh, Tyrone Mings of Aston Villa, and 
why those players suffered the ignominy of being left out in favor of Harry Maguire. Granted, he wears the captain's armband for both club and country. But I think the amount of pressure that will go into his playing in the tournament, every time he steps onto the pitch, every time he makes a mistake, all of the booing that will come from his own fans surely will be a distraction. And it begs the question why Gareth Southgate even bothered with Harry Maguire. But Southgate has done a tremendous job at uh, the English side, carrying them to uh, the 2018 semi-finals of the World Cup, uh, the 2020 Euros finals, and some would say the progression of the team up to this point probably means they will win the World Cup. They are certainly a dark horse contender for the tournament, and we'll see if they can go all the way.